Hey, Clemson family, it is a bye week on the field for the Tigers. They're out doing some awesome charitable efforts to help the community, and we've got some time to catch up on the latest recruiting news taking shape with this year's class. I'm Daniel Shirley. To break down the recruiting and everything that's going on with the Clemson class, we'll be joined by Jeremy Johnson, who does a terrific job covering recruiting for On3. Jeremy has, has been in the state of Georgia for a while. He knows the state, and he's doing a really good job covering recruiting uh, for On3 and with a little bit of a focus on the Clemson Tigers. Great to have him join us. I'm Bill Zimmerman. Welcome to Episode 36 of the Reign Supreme Allway Podcast. You can find all our episodes at our homepage, www.clemsonkickoff.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Both of those are at Clemson Kickoff. We appreciate those of you checking us out on youtube.com slash Clemson Kickoff. Give us a quick subscribe there or a follow on your favorite podcast app. We'll keep you posted whenever we update twice a week, even during the bye week. We are joined now by Jeremy Johnson from Clemson Sports and On3.com Network, great recruiting reporter covering all the prospects coming into Clemson and other schools in the Southeast. Jeremy, thanks for taking time. I know you keep super busy. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me on. So I think we all have our eyes on Caden McDonald, the defensive line prospect out of the Atlanta area. He's going to be committing on Halloween, Monday, October 31st. He's talked about a strong interest in Clemson, and your on three recruiting prediction machine is pointing him as a Clemson lean, uh, 61% likelihood of committing to the Tigers. What can you tell us about McDonald? I think it's a lot closer than what RPM says. I think there are you know, three teams that are really, really still in it. I don't know that he's made a decision. I know that Clemson is up there. He's, yeah, he's always had a great relationship with Avion Terrell, cornerback, four-star cornerback commit. And he's, they've grown up and been friends for a long time. So I know when they got the offer, that was one big selling point for him with Clemson. But I feel like Florida's in there. I've heard some buzz with Ohio State. Ohio State's another program that's kind of quietly involved. That I don't think people have really, you know, taken a true look at being a possibility there. And Oklahoma, I think they have an outside shot just because of the similarities between them and Clemson. There's a lot of that carryover from the staff that was, you know, that moved over there from from Clemson. They were recruiting Caden early on in his recruitment before Clemson ever offered. So he has a re- connection with those guys as well. So it's a very interesting recruitment, and it's coming down to the end. 6'2", 325, he would be another large addition to a sizable defensive line class already that Clemson has as far as guys who are committed. Absolutely. I think he has some versatility, too. He's a guy that he can play at true nose if you need him. He can slide out to the three technique. He can play the five. He's athletic enough. He can move up and down and off the defensive line. He's a playmaker. I mean, he made 19, he had 19 sacks last year. He hasn't had quite that production this year, but I think there's been some things that have been, you know, taken away just because of how productive he was as a junior. So, I mean, he's one of those players that you can plug in there. He can play any role you need him to over the next three or four years. So, He's definitely a big time, uh, you know, addition if they were to end up landing him. Jeremy, how good is this defensive line class that Clemson has with him or without him going forward? I mean, it's special right now. I mean, three of the best defensive linemen I've seen this year are committed to Clemson. I mean, Peter Woods is like a miniature version of Aaron Donald. He's physical. He's a great young man. He works hard, really plays hard. I mean, his motor is just, I don't know that there's another motor out there other than the guy that's committed as well, Stephon Green. Both of those guys, you turn on their tape or go watch them play, and their effort, you know, no matter what the score is, no matter what down it is, they, they play hard, they play their tails off, and I think that's, you know, why that group is really connected. I think they have a lot of camaraderie between each other just because they're so similar in mentality. Vic Burley is a guy that's he's massive, big, powerful hands. I mean, I went to a practice earlier this summer, and he's just – He's throwing guys around just with his hands and his, the shock of his initial co- contact. So, I mean, I think he can even play some on, on the outside, on the edge, in that, you know, seven technique, five technique. So, I mean, he's versatile. I think, you know, I, obviously A.J. Hoffler, he can, he can stand up and play linebacker. He can play rush in. He can play – he's a lot – he's really similar to what K.J. Henry does. And David Ojigby, another really athletic, bendy guy off the edge that could be a, you know, potential big-time pass rusher for him. So, this class is really special, and I think it it kind of, it does it may ride it may end up rivaling the group that's already there with Brzee and Miles Murphy and all those guys. I think that's this is a class that could come in and replace that one, that group pretty easily over the next couple of years. Is there a position right now you look at where Clemson needs to add another person? 
maybe like the hybrid safety position, kind of that where where that that place where Andrew McCuba plays. I think they're good at corner. I think you know you got Avion Terrell, Brandon Strozier, you got Shelton Lewis playing. You know I think he'll play some nickel, but you know looking at some looking at some needs there in the back end, at the safety spot, that nickel type position, and I think you you know looking at the wide receiver position, I, they really just kind of need a guy with some juice. I mean I don't. I don't know. I, don't know I really know how else to explain that one. It's just, you know, I like what Noble Johnson brings. He's a big play threat. Uh, Ronan uh, Hunnifin, I think he's going to end up playing receiver. But, you know, they just need that that pop, that guy like Amari Rogers, that guy like, you know, some of the guys they've had that just can blow the top off or you throw them a screen, they can go 80. That's something that they don't really have in this class yet. So that's something that I would be, you know, interested to see how they kind of replace that. Obviously running back, they don't have a running back yet. So. I think that'll be a position of need, you know, in the you know, filling out over the last few months of this of this class. Is there is there anybody to keep an eye on that would fill that role that they're in on? Tink Kelly, you know, I think he's listed as a corner, but he's he's talked a lot about they they don't even know what they're gonna do with him. And if he was to end up there, I mean he's talked with Coach Grisham about playing some receivers. So I think that's kind of what they envision him being, should he end up with Clemson. You know, he, obviously he can. He's a playmaker, so that could be what they're envisioning with him. I, I don't really know of anyone else that they are, you know, have really targeted or they're after at this point with that kind of skill set right now. What about running back? You mentioned that real quick. Is there somebody out there that they have a shot at that they're looking at? Because it feels like they really need to nail down somebody in this class. They have two uncommitted guys that they've offered. Re, uh, you know, as recently, you know, Jamarian Wilcox, guy kid out of South Pauling. He's got 1,700 yards rushing in eight games. He's He's been insane the last two years here in Georgia. So uh, 24 touchdowns, powerful back. You know, if they, if they were able to get him, that would be huge for them. That would be a big win. I think it's pretty much them in Kentucky from what I can tell at the moment. I know he took an official to Kentucky recently. So I feel like, you know, Clemson's in there. You know, they offered a young man out of Alabama this weekend, Jamarius Haynes. I don't think anybody knows a lot about him. Clemson was his first offer, and, you know, he seemed really happy about getting the offer on Sunday or Saturday. I think they have a good shot there. You know, we'll, we'll see how his recruitment plays. I think he's one of those guys that, you know, he picked up the offer with Clemson, and I think other programs will kind of go and check the tape as the class winds down, and he'll get more options. So there will be a little bit of a battle there. We'll see what happens. But I'm liking where Clemson is in both of those battles, you know. They land one or both, you know, that, that'll be a, that'll be big for them. Jeremy, how unusual it is it for a player to get an offer this late, his first offer from a program like Clemson? That seems like it's kind of not the norm. Yeah, it just depends on the situation. Some of these guys are in places where they don't go to camps. They don't go. They don't know about all these things that the future 50, the seven on seven circuit. And, you know, they're not seen and talked about and they're, you know, their tape may get you know, left out, or they just may be a backup when they just, you know, just needed a year to kind of get out there on the field and get some tape, you know, a few times a cycle. There's a guy at, right over here in Atlanta that's Pebblebrook, uh, Tyler Scott. He's, I mean, he was committed to Arkansas State a month ago, and now he's one of the most sought-after prospects in the country just because guys get better, guys develop, you know, between their junior and senior years. And I think it's good that these teams are still open-minded about what their board is going to look like. And, you know, you can find some really good football players just kind of waiting it out and seeing how some of these guys develop you know, in their, in their last year in high school. Is there, is there someone who you think is next after McDonald who would commit to Clemson uh, as we move through the season or is everything going to wait until December? I think there'll be a few guys that'll be, you know, Clemson will be in the race for, you know, I know obviously Cade, Caden commits on Monday. So then you have that the next date, I think would probably be to Marion Parker. Clemson's in there in that race. I think he had a great visit over the weekend. After that, you know, we'll be looking at Khalil Barnes, Notre Dame, Oklahoma. He's going to take an official to Notre Dame um, on November 5th, I believe. And, you know, Clemson's in there for that, for him. He would kind of play that, the Makuba role I was talking about earlier, that that hybrid safety. So he's a guy, you know, that, you know, has a lot of upside. So, you know, they're, they're in a couple of races that will come down and will happen, will conclude a little bit before uh, National Signing Day. So there's there's some intrigue there. And as always, I guess on the other side, there's going to, there could be decommits. Uh, yeah. Anybody out there? I know that a lot of people are looking at Peter Woods, maybe still talking to Alabama, or I saw that on your side, as a matter of fact. Is, is that, yeah. is there any danger to that, you think, or anybody else maybe decommitting? 
I mean, you never want to put anything past Alabama. So, I mean, that's <laughs> that's always going to be a he, – I mean, he's always been an Alabama fan. That whole family loves him. He, I mean, he literally lives 30 minutes from Alabama. So, I think that that's going to be, you know, something to watch. I don't know that he'll flip. I don't know that he will, you know, decommit and not end up at Clemson. I think he loves Clemson. But, you know, there's some, that's, that's always something to watch where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, and obviously I think – you know, there will be some guys that may take a look at some other schools, you know, just based off how they played over the senior year. I don't think anybody – I don't have any fear of anybody really in Clemson class at the moment other than think maybe Peter Woods, you know. So there was some, some stuff early in the year about, you know, Stephon Green, you know, maybe taking a look around. But, you know, everything I could tell, he's kind of he's kind of locked back in with, you know, Clemson. There's not really been too much, you know, any of anything there uh, as of late. Obviously, the – Quarterback in this class is nailed down with Christopher Vizina. He's been in the class for a while. How good is he as, you, as you've as you broken him down and see what he could bring to this program? I'm very high on Vizina. I really think he's, you know, I think he has a chance to be really special. So he's kind of been doing it all for him. I saw one game where he had like over 500 yards of total offense. He can run it or he can run around a little bit. He doesn't necessarily break off and take off downfield and run for 60 yards, but he can move around in the pocket. Got a really quick release. He's a big guy, a big, strong quarterback. Um, I know he played a little receiver, too, so he's he's a good athlete. I think he brings another dimension where he can throw the football down the field for Clemson, and I think that'll be that'll be big. And I think he's off the field. I really feel like that's where he'll shine. I think the Clemson fan base will just gravitate towards him just because of the type of player, the person he is. He's one of those guys that just guys has come to. And it's, I, it's really hard to explain. It's just like, that's what happens when he's around. Like you watch him on the seven on seven circuit, all the guys know him. So I think that's going to be a big thing for Clemson as a program to have a guy that can kind of be that gravitational pull at, at that position, especially. Jeremy, what have you heard about the new coaching staff? I guess at Clemson, they were on the staff, but guys in new roles. How are they being received out on the recruiting trails? I mean, I think I think guys love them. I mean, I think they're all really genuine people, and they've been around Clemson for a long time. So. You know, these guys, these recruits, they can they can sense that genuine, you know, feel from these coaches because you get you get so much of this conversation with a lot of these coaches and eventually you can just tell when it's, you know, not really what they're saying. I I've never heard that about a Clemson coach. So also I think a lot of these guys have relationships in the states that they're recruiting. Like I know, you know, obviously Mickey Khan, I believe, was at Grayson at one point. Yep. You know, he has a lot of relationships there. West West Goodwin as well. So you know, those guys, you know, are relatable to to the players that they recruit. That's why they're recruiting Georgia so well, just because of those relationships. And, you know, and they all have gone through this process before. And they went through the process being recruited by Clemson. So, you know, they do things their way. And, you know, I think the recruits that, you know, value the things that Clemson values, they really receive this new coach, the new coaching staff really well. So I think they're in a good spot. Jeremy, if Clemson was the kind of program that would take, you know, eight, ten, a dozen transfers every year, would Dabo Sweeney and the assistants have 20 commits that basically could fill just about every position on the field right now, except for running back? Mm -hmm. Very quality class, a lot of high grades. Would those guys be looking at Clemson as hard as they are if Sweeney was also, you know, out collecting a Jameer Gibbs type, an offensive lineman, things like that? Um, I think so. I think so. Just because, just because, I mean, it's football is a game. Like, I think attrition is what will win out. I think we're going to see that this year. You know, it's not like everybody, like last year, where everybody just looked up at Georgia and Georgia was just so much deeper and much more talented than everybody else. They just could roll through anybody with their third and fourth string guys. I think it's a little more cl clustered up this year. And I think the teams that are the healthiest down the stretch will win the championship. If you accumulate depth by getting as many good football players in your program as you can, I mean, I think, you know, everybody should be able to play. I mean, I don't think you should, you know, if I'm a recruit, I'm not going to say, well, I'm not going to go to Clemson just because they just got this senior or this junior running back from Texas that, you know, he will play. But what if he goes down? Now there is an opportunity there for you to go play. And, you know, and that's, that's going to be big for programs that have really good football players in place to, you know, kind of replace some of these guys. And these guys go to the pros, you know, where they come from the portal, you know, people are going to the pros faster than ever now. So you rarely see guys come in and play for four years anymore. So to answer your question, yes, I do think they would still, you know, a lot of these guys would still be looking at Clemson. You talked about the kind of players who are drawn to what Clemson has to offer. Do these guys talk much about NIL when it comes to the recruiting 
aspect and how they make their choice of where they're going to commit? Or is Clemson's class a little less likely to discuss that? Because I know you're covering several schools out there. Where do you think Clemson falls as far as NIL goes in these young players' minds? You know, I think it's Christopher Mazina said something to me, you know, I interviewed him and I kind of asked him about it. He was kind of like, you know, I'm not really focused on it because if I go to Clemson and I play well, I know NIL, you know, things will happen because, you know, it's about producing at that level anyway. So I kind of think that's kind of the motto or the kind of the stance that that whole class kind of takes. None of those guys have really, you know, mentioned it or talked about it. I've never seen them. You know, really, a lot of the guys that are in this class don't, you know, they're not even really active on social media. I mean, Avion Terrell probably has 35 tweets, and I could say the same thing for a few other guys that, you know, they just don't really talk a lot. They just kind of play football, and I think that's just, you know, what Clemson's culture is, you know, is about. So I think that's, I think that's just their stance. They don't really, you know, really too much care. Just real quick before you go, I'm sure you've seen this year's Clemson team several times. What do you think of how this team is playing right now? And although there's a lot of football left to be played, where do you see them fitting into the postseason? Yeah, I was able to see them in the spring. I watched them. I watched their spring game in person. I was at I was at big opening game at Mercedes Benz when they played Georgia Tech. I also got to catch them against Florida State and Syracuse. I watched them on television. So I think it's. I mean, I think they're a good football team. They need to. They have a good shot at making the playoff. If they can win out. They've had some, I mean, you know, you look at their resume and put it up against anyone, and it's 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 impressive. I mean, I don't know if, if they can afford a slip, but when you get to a one-loss situation, you start to compare, you know, they have some legitimate victories that, are, that will come into play down the road. I think they're, you know, they're ranked appropriately right now. I feel like they're one of the top four or five football teams in the country right now. They, you know, they can run the football with anyone. Their defense is just, you know, that defensive front, you know, maybe one of the best, most complete defensive lines in the country. So when they're fully, when they're whole with Brzee, you know, out there. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think they're, you know, they're one of those good football teams that will be there in the end. You know, it's just what they, what they whatever they get out of the quarterback position down the stretch that will determine how far they go once the ACC championship and, the you know, the college football playoff get here. Early signing day. December 21st, and I know you're going to be on top of everything that's unfolding. So, Jeremy, thanks a lot for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today on 3.com network, clemsonsports.com. Jeremy Johnson, thanks a bunch. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me. There's plenty going on around campus, even during this bye week, and we are going to try to catch you up on some of it. We'll preview the basketball season in the next few days. We'll have some team grades out position unit by position unit. We'll keep an eye on that Caden McDonald commitment and see if he ends up in the Clemson fold along with those five defensive linemen already mentioned. Busy time for a bye week, isn't it? It is, and we've got a huge game coming up next week with Notre Dame. Can't wait to talk about that game, break that game down. It's always fun when Clemson gets to go to South Bend and play a game, and that's going to be a, a great time next week. We will preview that next week. As of now, we got a great guest lined up to help us out with that. So I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode, catching up on recruiting. We are glad you found us, Clemson family. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Hit that follow button on a podcast app. You can stay up to speed every time there's big news around Clemson athletics, and we can keep it a free podcast the more you subscribe to us. Check out our homepage at www.clemsonkickoff.com. We link all the major podcast apps there with our pages so you can listen directly. You can also follow us on Twitter or Instagram at Clemson Kickoff and keep up with breaking news through us between episodes on social media. Well, until we record again, I'm Bill Zimmerman. I'm Daniel Shirley. Go Tigers.